it's good to see everybody out. I had a little incident happen this week, and it kind of led me to the teaching I'm going to go on this morning. Uh, I'll give you the incident, and then we're going to go to Scripture. I'm going to be in the book of John starting out, if y'all want to turn there, chapter 16. I had an incident, and I want to tell you about this incident. <laughs> you, never, you never know what you're going to get into in life. Uh, Thursday at work, I had Brother Albert come up at the end of the day at work and said, uh, I need you to go pray for these individuals. Can you do that? I said, yeah. So me and Brother Rick, he asked me and Brother Rick go, said he didn't give us much information, said these people are good people, a good couple, men and women of God, no nonsense, very, very spirit-filled people. He says, uh, I told them you were coming and uh, just go over there. I said, okay. What are we praying for? Well, She's got some problems with her health and some situations. Uh, just let, let the Lord lead you. I said, okay. So I go to this individual, and I'm just, because I don't have permission, not going to use their names, but well, this, uh, this individual's uh, business, and the first words out of her mouth, she says, are you Hagerman? And I says, well, I'm Hagerman. She says, come in here. And Brother Rick, he told him who he was. You know, we talked a minute, and the very first thing she asked me, I said, God bless her. She says, are you spirit-filled? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She says, good, come in here to me. <laughs> so I walked in to, to this woman, and she's an awesome woman of God, in my opinion. But very, uh, no, not, and she, come, she says, come here to me. She says, let me hold your hand. I says, all right. I, I'll be honest with you, I was intimidated. <laughs> Y'all ever get that way? With, and looking me over, and for a minute, the enemy, he's talking to me. He said, she's going to see. She's going to see. Anyway, she sat there, loving her eyes, and she told me, she started telling me what she was battling. And God bless her, she's in a battle. She's in a storm. And I said, Miss So-and-So, what do you want me to do? I says, I'm going to pray for you. She says, I need a miracle. I need it now. I says, all right. So I talked to her a little longer, and I says, Miss So-and-so, how would you like me to pray? I need a miracle, she says. <laughs> I'm not getting the answer I want. I want her to give me an explicit how to pray. She did not do this. She was doing this to testing me too. I figured out later, which nothing wrong with that. If you want somebody to pray with and they tell you they're spirit-filled, they need to be spirit-filled. Amen? Amen? I don't blame this woman at all. She did not give me the, the, uh, the answer or the response that I wanted, so I had to absolutely 100% rely on God. And this is how we should do it every time every time. I learned a valuable lesson on this. I absolutely I listened to her story and sometimes in my life, and I'm sure y'all have been in the same situations, that I can look in the natural and think they need this or maybe they need that. You know what? I don't know what they need. I'm looking with my carnal eyes and I can see only what I can see and I know only what you let me know and vice versa. Amen? There's things I do not tell you. You know this, right? Because <laughs> I don't want to get stoned up here. So lots of times my problem may be coming out in my body or in my situations, but my true root of my problem is something that I've hid from you. Maybe from embarrassment or I'm just not ready to divulge it. Anybody ever been there? This is where we have to absolutely rely on the Lord. Absolutely right on the Lord. And the good thing about it is, is we can. It's set up that way. Amen? All right, if you would, going from there, in John chapter 16, <clears throat> I want to read this, because this really come to me, where, having dealt with this situation. Jesus is teaching his disciples that he's, he's, he's at the end of his uh, walk here. He's telling them, I'm going to leave, I'm going to, I'm going to be crucified. I'm, I'm going to leave you. And they're naturally looking at this in the corner of mind and they're like, oh my goodness, you know, our, 
You're supposed to be the king. You're our Messiah. And he is trying to explain to his disciples that this has to happen. This has to happen. And I praise God did. And I mean this in all, all reverence, my God, but praise God, he did go on. I thought many times, I thought, man, it'd be awesome for Jesus to walk with me and I could have walked in his ministry, even for three years. How, how awesome that would be, you know, to just sit there and, and hold the hand of my, my Lord. But you know what is, is more awesome? Is he's left us the Holy Spirit that never leaves me or forsake me. Jesus had to go different places. Amen. He couldn't be everywhere at one time at that time. Now he can. He's with us always. Amen. This is awesome. So I'm, Dad, I'm in chapter 16. I'm going to start in verse 5. Listen to the words of your Lord. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me whither thou goest. Because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, I love that word, the Comforter, the Comforter will not come unto you. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I, I will send him unto you. This is amen. This is an amen. And when he is come, look at verse 8, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Because, listen to that. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now look at 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he... Now look how personal Jesus has made the Holy Spirit. Many people, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, said, it. You heard them do this? They do. He's not an it. He's a he. Amen. He's a he. They are personalizing him. Look at this. How be it when he, who? The Spirit of truth is come. He, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Just like my situation the other day, this lady was desperate. Her and her husband needed God desperately. She knows God's a miracle worker. She had given me a testimony of all the things she had seen God do in her life. Miracles. You ought to hear this individual's testimony. Uh, uh, healings and movements of God on other people's lives radically changed for the good because of the power of the living God. Amen? This was awesome. I was mesmerized. I could have sat and listened to her testimony for hours. She was captivating to me. I love to hear about how God comes through in the adversities of life. Don't you? I love it. That's why your testimony is so important because someone needs to hear how God delivered you. Amen? I might need to hear what happened to you and how you come out because I could be in my storm. This lady was telling me these things, but she wouldn't give me that sentence I wanted. This is how I want you to pray. She just says, I need God and I need a miracle. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He. He will guide you in all truth. This is awesome. I need this so bad. I needed it right then. I needed it right then. God, how do I pray? So I told her, her being a spirit-filled woman herself, I said, I said, I'd just like to praise the Lord. And I said, get some direction. She says, amen, brother. She knew that was her. She was willing to do it, and that's what we've done. The spirit of truth... He will guide you in all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall see, well, uh, shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall 
see me because I go to the Father. Now I can imagine I'd have been like them disciples. I would not want him to go, but I'm, I praise God that he went. And I mean that because I needed the Holy Spirit to guide me in truth. You need him. I mean this is no disrespect, but we are lacking in this area. Can I get an amen on that? There are so many things that I have had to deal with that the answer was right there that God could have showed me in my time exactly what I need to do. And you know what I did? I relied on me. <laughs> I relied on me. I looked at the natural and the carnal situation and circumstances and I was led by maybe emotions or my feelings. And a lot of times it ends in devastation. I made some wrong decisions based on what I seen. Anybody else done that? Or what I felt at that time. I am terribly, I am terrible in my confession to you to be led a lot of times by my emotion of anger. When someone hurts me or something I feel, I want to be steered that way. It's just a natural thing to me. I'm not a baller or a squalor, not that that's a bad thing, but I get emotionally angry at times and I am led by my carnal feelings that way instead of relying on Him that shall guide me always in all truth. For anybody that's in a storm right now, your answer is within you. Is this awesome? The answer is within you. Your next step. So many times, I don't want to get off track here, but so many times I want the big answer I want the grand thing. I want what's coming for me, God. What do you want in this ministry, Lord? I want that, 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 that huge crowd, and we want, we want to see people you know, slain, and we want to see all these miraculous things. And God usually, you know what He does to me? He gives me the very next step. Not the great ending, the very next step. He guides you in all truth, but the, the truth is you can't handle the big next step. You just need that first step of faith. That very next step is the step we're looking for. Amen? And He'll guide you in this. You have... This is Jesus speaking. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I'm going to read this to you because I, I love this. This is where the Lord led me next. Romans chapter 8. I'm not going to tear up your sermon, Brother Albert. I'm really not. <laughs> we talk about being carnally minded, spiritually minded, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, praise God. I want you to look at verse 14 if you would. Chapter 8 in Romans, verse 14. Y'all there? For as many as are led, led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. That little three-letter word right there really captivated me. You're spirit-filled, amen? amen? Okay, you are. You're right. You've got the Spirit to raise Christ in you. Right, church? Amen. Right, church? Okay, now I have to ask myself, am I led by it? Because, see, there is a choice. Because Have you noticed that? For as many as are led. So there are some that are not led. It's not that we're bad people. This time. Sometimes we're led because if you read that whole chapter right there, you'll see you can be led by your carnal thoughts. Amen? What I just explained to you, my emotions, my feelings, what someone else has said over my situation can absolutely lead me. Can I have an amen on that? A lot of times I listen to the negative. We are bombarded by the negative in this nation. I've got caught up into this. <laughs> Study the prophecies. I love the prophecies. I do not teach on the prophecies because God has not allowed me to at this time in this church. However, I love to ch uh, check on them myself, okay? But I'm telling you, if you look at the prophecies in a certain eye set, negativity can come in. Almost a depression can grip you for what you read that is coming. Or you can be led by the Spirit of God and we'd be doing cartwheels and rejoicing for what is coming because the king is coming back. Amen? Amen? But I'm telling you, it makes a difference who's leading you, the world or the Spirit. 
I have done my best in this church to teach you this. You have a choice. Amen. If you're depressed, listen to me. You're thinking on depressed things. Now, I realize you have a tendency to want to argue this. You don't know what's happened in my life. You're right, I don't. And God bless you. There is a time for mourning and for tears. Amen? Amen. But I'm telling you to stay in that is wrong. Because Jesus says you can do all things through Christ. Jesus come to give you life and life more abundantly. You're more than a car. But only, listen, only if you're led by the Spirit of truth. The comforter. Don't you love that word in your time of need? The comforter. Amen. I love that the thing fit that that would go in our holy. Amen. Amen. The comforter. I need at times a comforter to tell me it's all right, not head. Calm down, Rob. You're looking at the circumstances and not me. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That really spoke volumes to me. I hope it does you. I need to be led by the Spirit because I tell you, I don't know always how I should pray. I have been led so many times, and I'm just confessing this to you because I do not want you to make this same mistake by what I have been told, by what I have felt, and I have stepped in that direction, direction because it seemed like the way to go. Listen, even logically, it appeared to be the right thing. You ever hear that song, All Things That Glitter Is Not Gold? Amen. It's truth. It's truth. Battling sickness. Sometimes it gets long-winded. Had a situation here that have been battling within our family, just to share it with you. And it goes on and on. And you know what's tough? I say this because some of you are battling these things yourselves. Is in the flesh. Listen to me. In the flesh, there are times teaching, and you've heard me teach. God bless you. <laughs> you have. You hear me, and it's always that positive. God's a healer. Amen. God's on the throne. Amen. Amen. I love to say that. I mean it when I say it. But I'm telling your teacher battle stuff, and there's days that I go, Will this never back off me? How much longer do I have to put up with this, Lord? Situation, circumstances, pains are real. Amen? Pain is real. I don't care if it's an emotional pain or a physical pain. It is real to this body. But I tell you a truth. This is truth. Now, if I am led by my pain, it's not that I, it's not, listen, listen, I'm not diminishing my pain, okay, or your pain. But if I am led by that, that is what dictating my outcome. It really is, my brothers and sisters, it is. If I am led by the report, that's what will show up here. I've seen Christians that can be in terrible. We have them in here and I praise God for you because I watch y'all. I watch y'all. And I watch how circumstances come in your life. And you know what? There's times I want to fold like a $2 suitcase. <laughs> I really do. I'm just, whew, I'm tired of it. I don't want to get up there because, you know, and tell them that because, you know what? I'm not feeling it in my life. It's just being honest. But it doesn't change this truth. Amen. Amen. It's imperative that we be led by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. He will guide me in all truth. And those that are led by Him are the sons and daughters of the living God. Now, I get off track. And I do. But I come back. I come back. Because it matters what I profess and confess. Amen? Right. I want to show you something else. Romans chapter 8, while we're still there in verse 26. 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth 
our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself, I love this, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Thank you, church. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Why is it so important to let the Spirit lead me? Because he's going he's to lead me the right way every single time. Amen. Every single time you could come to me and me and look at my uh, situation or your situation and say, Brother Robert, what do you think? Who cares what I think? You need to worry what, what the Spirit of the living God thinks. Amen? This is where you're going to get your victory. I may tell you the best thing I can. I want to see you delivered. I want to see you healed, victorious in your life. You have no idea. But if I do it in the flesh, I could mislead you. Your mothers, sisters, husbands, wives, sometimes they may mislead you. Why? Because you don't always know how and what you should pray. Amen? The Spirit of God will never lead you the wrong path. Now listen, listen. It may look like the wrong way at first. Has anybody been there? Can I get a witness on this? I've had God tell me to do this, and I'm like, uh-uh. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just be honest. When he told me in the shower, arguing with him, teach him the truth. Don't back up. He says, I'll do the rest. That's my word from God. And I declare that before you. That's what God told me. I said, I don't want to. Especially in the area, because I was talking to him about divine healing. Especially, Lord, I don't want to go there. I'll just be honest. Why? Because that's an area that is controversial here. You know it and I know it. Not on demons, Lord. I know the Bible talks about unclean, foul, spirits of infirmity. Amen? Lord, don't, don't put me up there teaching about that. Why can't I just give them feel-good messages? God loves you. And He does. Amen? Grace is awesome. We've been studying on grace, and I love grace. I love teaching on grace. But sometimes He wants me to do these things too. He just does. However, if I'm led by the Spirit of God, we're on the right path. Even if it appears that your first step of faith is contrary to everything you're being told by the world, it ain't going to happen. It won't work. I've seen so and so stood for this. I watched them. They're dead. So and so stood for that. And they're still broke. So and so stood for this, and they're still not together. On and on. Hear me. We're to be led by the Spirit of God. That's what the Word says. I love this. Look at verse 28. And we know. Listen to this, church. And we know that all things... How many things? All things work together for what? For good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to His purpose. You know, when I go to the Spirit of Truth, I've listen, I don't mean this... Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I've had people come to me, Christians come to me and said, well, I feel like... God just told me that I'm not worthy and God told me that I'm not this, this, and that and God told me I'm not there. I'm telling you, you're not hearing from God. Your God is a God of love. Your God is a conqueror. Your God will supply your need. It doesn't matter about my education. I fell into this trap. I said, I don't need to be up there, Brother Albert. I haven't got the education a lot of these people have. I don't have the experience. But when you're led by God, He does all this. He gives it to you. This is the easiest thing. You know what people think they're easy in this? Oh, this is going to get me in trouble because it's going on TV. But you know what? <laughs> I guess I like it. A lot of people say, just send me your document and I'll teach it. That's easy. 
That's easy. I could call the church of so-and-so and -so they'll give me something to teach on. Won't they, Brother Albert? I can get all kinds of pamphlets. It's already pre-done. All i got to do is read it to you. Wing study and, and I can say, you read Donna and, and, and you read Jeff. And, or we can do what God says. It appears harder this way. And if you don't believe me, you know, you're, you can try it. It's, it's not that easy, you know, if I do it. But when He does it, you just let Him, you just speak what He tells you. Amen? Amen. This is awesome. If I had to get up here and just do what I'm doing today, whether you love me or hate me, uh, if I had to do it in the flesh, <laughs> I, the, the, most people wouldn't come back. I'd bore you to tears. I couldn't keep your, you know. God, though, God, God will guide us in all truth. God will equip you to do whatever He's told you to do. Can I get a witness on that? If God has spoke to you, your supply is out there. Now, I like to see it there before I get there, don't you? I want to know that, that you know, the, the car I need to get there is, or, 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 or the church is going to be provided or, or the equipment I need to do this is there. I want to see it with these eyes. But if God has given you a word, go toward it. Your supply is there. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, your supply is there. You'll find what you need when you step in faith toward it if you're led by the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 He that searcheth the hearts... I'm going to read 27 one more time before I leave this. Uh, leave this. He that searcheth the hearts, chapter 8, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints. Now, I'm going to speak on this and this, people will turn me off because of this. That's between you and God. It's the Word of God. Christians today, for some reason... We're hesitant to mention this in the church and shame on us. We're missing a very vital tool in the churches of today. You know what that tool is? It's called praying in the Spirit. Amen. Okay. I could hear a pin drop there. Did you all hear that silence? Praying in the Spirit. Letting the Spirit lead me with groanings. What's it say in verse 26? Which cannot be uttered. One time I went to this conference. Are you with me, church? You're still with me, right? I'm going to make them say, y'all love Brother Robert, right? <laughs> still, huh? Okay. Went to this conference one time, and I was in there. This stuff is new to me. This is several years ago now. And, 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 and there was a, a, a middle-aged woman there, and she was... Uh, they had called for prayer, prayer on the children... Uh, uh, you know, of our children. There was uh, lots of people in this event and the uh, the man preaching the same. He says, I want us all together in unity and let's pray for our children. This woman broke out in this moaning and groaning, hit her knees in the aisle and she travailed unto God. Now, I couldn't understand one word that woman said. But you know who did? Amen. God did. She let her spirit pray, and I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, she wasn't afraid to let it go. She didn't care what anybody thought. She didn't care what I thought. I sat there, and I looked at her. I didn't understand one thing. You know, God knew everything that come out of that woman's spirit. Amen? Amen. And according to the Word of God, God will move on such matters. Amen? Amen. All good. All good. Listen, church. If you would, turn to the book of Jude. This is not going to be a teaching on speaking in tongues or the gift of tongues. This is not what I'm going at all. I'm going to talk about letting your spirit, your groanings which cannot be uttered, Pray. I'm talking about, has anybody had something in their life that you just, it was absolutely a life or death situation to you? Whether it was anybody, has anybody else been there? When you had a loved one or whatever, a financial or a health, 
issue or just whatever. Has anybody been in that situation? Boy, I've been there. How many English words I use, how many adjectives and adverbs I tried to get across to my father. Lord, I need help. I need you now in a mighty way, Lord. Y'all done this? Boy, I've done this. I cried out to him so long I run out of words. Can you believe that? Have you ever heard me talk? I run out of words. It's true, though. <laughs> Even me. I got to the end of my vocabulary, which isn't as long as y'all. Well, you probably know. But I got to the end of it. You know what happened then? I kept going. I kept going. I kept travailing. You know what happened? My spirit got geared up. Amen. It's like... And then it started praying. And then you know what happened? I started getting built up in it. I started feeling better. And I mean, I am, I, 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 I'm conversing with God in a way that if you were standing there, you would say, He's lost His blooming mind. He don't make a lick of sense. God knew every word I was crying out to Him that was a guttural, un, unlamed language. Amen. Amen. I let my spirit pray because I was desperate. I was desperate. God heard my prayer. Please, please. You are spirit filled. Amen. Amen. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Don't miss this mighty weapon of God. Pray in the spirit. I am ending this. If you were oh, oh are you in the book of Jude with me? Amen. Verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of His saints. Hallelujah. Listen. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouths speak great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Stay with me, church. But listen, he's switching gears here. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the what? Spirit. Having not the Spirit. He's speaking to you again, verse 20. Listen. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Do you see it, church? Mm -hmm. keep, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. There's going to be mockers. There's going to be those who say, what is she doing? What's he doing? Why are they acting so goofy? Do you hear her wailing and moaning out to God? <laughs> she don't need God. She needs a doctor or a psychiatrist. Mockers. This lady that I went and this couple that I went and prayed for in this town, she's ridiculed terribly. She's too, listen to this, she's too spiritual. Isn't that odd to y'all? Here I'm trying to get more spiritual and she's too spiritual. To go back to the situation, and I'm ending here. I told you in this lady's situation, her and her husband, I had no idea how to pray. All I knew is she needed a miracle. A lot of us need a miracle. Amen? I say a lot of us need a miracle. So, I let the Lord thy God, the Spirit of the living God, lead me in prayer. Because I had no idea what to tell this woman. I had no idea how to pray. If she had a toothache, I could have been praying for her toe. Amen? And she'd be going, what is wrong with this old boy? 
If he is spirit-filled, he ought to know what's wrong with me. Amen? So I let the Spirit lead me. And please, please, please do not take this as boast. No. No. I let the Spirit of truth guide me. And He told me how to pray. And when we left... The lady said, and like I said, this is no brag. Please, this is all God. Amen. This is God. She says, you are exactly what Brother Albert told me you men would be. For she said, you told me a truth. If I would have relied on me, <laughs> she'd laugh me out of her business. But because the Spirit of God was allowed to lead... Because I had to have him. I had to have him. God led me. And according to her, she was blessed. Amen? Please, church, don't forsake praying in the Spirit. Let your spirit pray and then do what he says. I know sometimes, listen, it's not going to look like the thing to do. Okay? Lots of times it'll be, that just don't seem right. Amen. But your he, the Holy Spirit, will never guide you wrong. It'll always be for the good. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.